Friends in Christ, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, just this past Wednesday, began a new series of catechesis on discernment. So discernment is what is necessary to make good decisions and good choices in our relationships, in our families. It's discernment that's necessary to make good choices about work or the decisions that we make and the choices about our money and the things that we own and how we use them. But ultimately, our Holy Father went on to talk about the necessity of discernment to understand our choices for the kingdom of God. So the way God's inviting us to follow Christ, to be disciples of our Lord, and to embrace this gift of eternal life that God offers to everyone requires discernment. And that's what Christ is ultimately pointing us towards in the gospel this morning. Jesus is asking us to take account of all that we have in our lives, all that we share in relationships and work and possessions, and be willing to renounce everything for the sake of the kingdom of God, to place the kingdom of God as the top priority over our relationships with our mothers and fathers, relationship with our spouse, relationship with our own children, to renounce all those things for the sake of the kingdom of God, to be willing to do so. He talks about possessions, those two powerful parables about counting the cost, understanding what it it will cost us to follow Christ, which is everything, to be willing to renounce all that we have and to take up our cross, even the sufferings we endure, to be willing to take up our cross and follow him, or in the words of Christ, you cannot be my disciple. Very challenging and difficult gospel passage. The Christ is asking us to give nothing less than everything in a life of discipleship, to follow him in the kingdom of God. And if we're honest, we can admit that we don't often make good decisions about the things of the earth in our relationships and friendships, the things that we possess and the work that we do. Never mind making good decisions and discernment about the kingdom of God and ultimately following Christ. And that's the challenge that we find in the first reading this morning, the Book of Wisdom. The author of the Book of Wisdom says, Who can know God's counsel? Or who can conceive what the Lord intends? For the deliberations of mortals are timid and unsure are our plans. You know, he's saying we don't always discern well. We don't always make good choices and good decisions. The author of Wisdom goes on to say, Scarce do we guess the things on earth. But when things are in heaven, who can search them out? You know, only with great effort do we sometimes understand what we want and how to make our own choices, never mind knowing the things of God. And he goes on, finally, to offer a solution. He says, whoever knew your counsel, except you had given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high, and thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. You know, you've heard the expression before, God writes straight with crooked lines. Well, this is the biblical foundation for that adage, that God does write straight with crooked lines. Many times in the poor decisions that we make, in our own failures, through our own weakness, if we're open to the Holy Spirit, if we're open to the wisdom of God, God can begin to set the path straight once again. And perhaps even now, we're in the midst of dealing with the repercussions of bad decisions. Perhaps we've made choices that have made life difficult for us and we want God to guide and direct us. 
take courage, have hope. God constantly enters into our lives to set the path straight if we allow him, if we let him. There's a beautiful true story about a young man, and I'll tell you his name at the end of the story, but I promise you've heard his name before. But it's a story about a young man who grew up during the time when slavery was acceptable in that part of the world. Now, slavery is an abhorrent practice that God condemns. God in no way accepts that reality. But as I mentioned a moment ago, God writes straight with crooked lines. He's able to guide the lives even of those who fall under such evils. But this young man wanted to take things into his own hands. And so one day, he left suddenly, abandoned his place, and made one bad decision after another after another. Until ultimately, he got into trouble with the law, and he wound up in the local jail. He literally hit rock bottom. But it was in that place, in the darkness of that reality that he had found, that the light of God began to shine. It was in that prison that he met an old man who would change his life forever. That old man loved him, and he taught him about the gospel, that Jesus Christ came to suffer and die on the cross, to forgive us for our faults and sins and failings, that God loves us unconditionally. He taught him that God has a plan for our lives and he wants us all to be free. And then he told him, when you become free from this place, I want you to return back to where you were. The young man said, go back. You've got to be out of your mind. Do you have any idea how severe the penalty is for what I've done? Do you have any idea what awaits me? And the old man said, I know exactly what awaits you because your master is known to me. I know who he is and he owes me. And I will write a letter for you guaranteeing your safe acceptance back once again, not only as a slave, but as a brother in the Lord. That young man's name was Onesimus. And I said you've heard his name before because he is the subject of the second reading we listened to this weekend. And that old man was none other than the Apostle St. Paul. And the letter he promised to write is our second reading. St. Paul's letter to Philemon, the master of that servant, And St. Paul says in the strongest of terms this morning, I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus, urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother. Welcome him as you would welcome me. However we make our choices in this world, whatever decisions that we make, God can ultimately set us back on the right path and give us that true freedom and that joy that we desire. How are we open to the wisdom of God in our lives today? How can we let the Holy Spirit illumine our hearts and help us to make better choices, better decisions? And ultimately, in the words of the author to the book of wisdom, thus may the paths of those on earth be made straight.